Uh, so I'm here to talk, talk about status and, and just so we're all on the pay, same page, um, status is defined as one, a seizure lasting more than five minutes. As you know, most seizures self-terminate within a minute or two. So how does this practically pay out, play out? Well, if EMS brings me a patient and says when they got there, the patient was still seizing, I consider that status because I've never worked in a place where EMS could be called, 911 could be called, and EMS could be at the bedside tre treating in five minutes. Um, the other thing I consider status is if you, if you think about it, is when a patient seizes in the uh, emergency department and the nurses go to get the Versed or Ativan and the patient is still seizing because I have never worked in a place where patients start seizing, the nurses go to the Pixis, type in a name, come back, and give the medicine within five minutes. So, so those are my two personal definitions of status. Um, and of course, the other is um, greater than one seizure without return to normal level of consciousness. So when you think about status, I mean, the vast majority of patients are in status because of medication non-adherence. They miss their Keppra, they miss their Keppra for a week, they miss whatever. So the other way to think about it is a differential that's terrible causes of status epilepticus include eclampsia. So first is trauma. The one we typically think about is uh, an epidural hematoma uh, at causing, causing seizures. Toxins can do it. We live in Philly. We see a lot of cocaine. I think everybody here sees lots of cocaine, lots of methamphetamine. And then withdrawal symptoms can do it. So withdrawal from uh, alcohol is the typical one. Also a lot of withdrawal from benzodiazepines, from the, the Zanny bars that they've been using. I work in Kensington uh, half the time. So who knows what my patients are using. Um, so we did, ter we did the T for terrible causes. So CNS lesion, any space occupying lesion can do it. Tumor, mass, meningioma. Strokes are terrible causes of status or an S. Um, we typically think of intracranial hemorrhage as the acute cause of status. The other one that we can think about is cerebral venous thrombosis as a cause of status. And then old strokes, so that we, that we typically think of it in acute strokes, if someone has an old stroke, now they have encephalomalacia, they got dead brain, that can be a nidus for seizures. So electrolytes, terrible causes of status epilepticus, we're on E. That's either salt, hyponatremia, or sugar, hypoglycemia. Infection, uh, terrible causes of status epilepticus include, we're on infection, meningitis, cerebritis can do it. Um, if you're taking your boards, the, the, old, the one that you often see is HSV encephalitis causing temporal lobe lesions. That's kind of a very typical board question. And then eclampsia, which we just, we just heard about. So terrible causes of status epilepticus include eclampsia. So how do we treat this? Well, in general, we're all going to start off the same way with benzodiazepines. So which benzodiazepines should we use? So we have two choices, usually lorazepam or midazolam. If you're giving something IM, it should likely be midazolam. So midazolam is water soluble. It's very rapidly absorbed IM. It can also be given. Um, it can be given buccal. Um, it can be given intranasal, especially in kids. Um, and if you look at lorazepam, if you've ever held up a vial, it's usually packaged in propylene glycol. It's very thick. Take a look the next time the nurses are drawing up. So it's much better to be given IV. And when you um, uh, when you're giving it though. Whatever you have, just give it. If you have midazolam pulled out, you have an IV, just give the midazolam. If all you have is lorazepam IM, give that. But the preferred agents, lorazepam IV, midazolam IM. What doses should we be using? So we should be using higher doses. We should not be giving, when we're giving lorazepam, we should not be giving one or two milligrams. We should be giving four milligrams to adult patients. And I'm, and I'm only talking about adult patients here. So I did go to Hahnemann um, for my residency. If anybody knows about Dr. Hahnemann, um, who, who came up with it, he was a homeopath. But if you're giving 
one milligram of Ativan to somebody who's seizing, you're practicing homeopathy. We need to give real doses of four milligrams of lorazepam as your first dose and 10 of midazolam. Because the worry is always, right, the patient's going to stop breathing. We, we gave them these huge doses. When you see somebody seizing, they have a very abnormal respiratory pattern. They're not moving air. So if we stop the seizure, they're going to be breathing better and their oxygen should go up. So four milligrams and 10 milligrams should be your starting dose. Um, as soon as you're giving those for status, you want to be calling for your second line anti-epileptic drug. And in the meantime, usually while that's getting hung, if, if a patient is still seizing, you want to repeat your dose of benzodiazepine and then hang that second line anti-epileptic drug. So what should be our second line anti-epileptic drug? So this is really um, uh, you know, informed by the ESET trial, which was the established status epilepticus treatment trial, which was published in 2019. Um, it was a really nicely done trial, compared, uh, compared levetiracetam to valproic acid to phosphenitoin. And shockingly, they basically all were the same. They all were the same efficacy, and um, they all had the same so side effect profile. So there's really not clear that one is better than the other. That being said, we've kind of all gone to levetiracetam. Uh, our neurologists love it. Our trauma surgeons love it. Our neurosurgeons love it. So we've all kind of, I think, mostly migrated to levetiracetam. Um, and what dosing should we be giving? So in an adult, we max out at 4,500 um, milligrams. So 60 milligrams per kilogram, max of 4,500 milligrams, which would be the, the dose for 75 kilo person. Now that dosing, to be completely honest, is not evidence-based. So there are places that give 40, that give 60. We've based this on the ESET trial, but it is not definitive that that is the optimal dose to be given. But 4,500 milligrams is generally our standard dose for status. So we've given, we've given benzos. We've given, we've loaded our patient with levetiracetam. And now we're still seasoning. So what do we do third line? Now we're on to anesthetic. So what might be new uh, for people is the use of ketamine for status epilepticus. And this has been around for a while, but I really think it's now gaining some popularity for the use in status. So it blocks NDMA receptors. It blocks excitatory transmitters. Um, so that has now become personally my third line uh, medication for status epilepticus. Now, the dosing for this is all over the place. I've seen one milligram per kilogram. I've seen two milligrams per kilogram. I've seen infusions, I've seen bolus plus infusion, it's all over the place. Um, typically, my personal practice is to give two milligrams per kilogram. I think that gives you a nice anesthetic dose, and if you need to intubate the patient, you've now given the induction agent. So I think it really accomplishes uh, two, two vital tasks when you're giving that two milligrams per kilogram. But again, that's my personal practice. If you look in a reference, you'll see um, dosing all over the place. What are some other options? The older options, I think, are using propofol and midazolam. Now, if you're doing a midazolam infusion for general anesthesia, your loading dose is going to be, a, and infusions are going to be a lot higher than you're used to. So your loading dose is 0.3 milligrams per kilogram. So yes, for someone like me, who's 80 kilos, you're going to be bolusing 24 milligrams up front and then starting me on an infusion of at least 8 milligrams um, per minute. Now, uh, per hour, I'm sorry. Now, if you go up to an epilepsy unit, to a NICU, you'll see patients who are on midazolam 20, 30, 40 milligrams an hour. So this is a very wide dosing range and this is go high. Um, and the other one that's pretty much more commonly used because it's available is propofol. Um, the one caveat, if you're using propofol for status, you got to start at a dose of 30 um, because that's where you get the, the anti-epileptic um, uh, effects. So you don't want to be starting, starting low. This is a place where you start at 30 
and uh, go up from there. Now, when you get to the third line, you have to be thinking, how am I going to get this patient in? Anybody who's at getting a third line anti epileptic needs to be on continuous EEG. Um, and uh, we, we can make the argument that, that people, who, that patients who are on, se- who stop seizing with second line anti epileptics also should be on continuous EEG monitor. So why is that? Well, what you're worried about is that the patient has uh, um, converted from convulsive to non convulsive status, which is really an EEG diagnosis. So what you're saying is the body stops uh, shaking, but the brain is still seizing at the same time. So you want to be thinking about continuous EEG monitoring. And the signs of non-convulsive can be non-convulsive status can be really subtle. So it may just be some eye deviation. It may just be some subtle hand twitching or mouth twitching, which is why it's really hard to make this diagnosis um, clinically. So if I'm at a place and I'm taking care of somebody with status, I've gotten to the second line agent, they're still not waking up, maybe I haven't moved to a third line agent, I'm figuring out how am I going to get my patient somewhere where they can do continuous EEG. So let me bring you to what my personal algorithm is, because I think status epilepticus is one of those disease states where in your mind, you want to have an algorithm. You don't want to be looking up um, the how to treat status while your patient is seizing. So status is one of the, the disease states. I have an algorithm that's pre-planned in my mind. So as I said, I'm starting with lorazepam 4 or midazolam 10. And at that point, I'm calling for my, for my Levitar c I'm calling that. And I personally repeat a dose if the patient's still seizing at 8 milligrams per at lorazepam of 8 milligrams IV. I double the dose. Um, I think that this is, uh, you know, I think this helps get better control of the seizures. I think it's safe. And again, if we're trying to get somebody to stop seizing, we want to go at them hard and we want to go fast. So that's at five minutes. At 10 minutes, patient's still seizing. We're hanging our 4,500 of levis serotonin. That's going up at minute 10. At minute 20, they're still seizing. They're getting the ketamine. They're getting the two milligrams per kilogram IV. And I'm going to be thinking, how am I going to get this patient a continuous EEG monitor? If they get the ketamine and they're still seizing, now we're intubating. Now I'm starting propofol for these patients. Now, if you look, I'm getting here at at 30 minutes from that first seizure. Um, If you look at the guidelines, they say 60 minutes. I think 60 minutes is way too long for a patient to continue seizing. Um, There's an effect called the kindling effect when you talk about seizures, where one seizure begets another, begets another, begets another. And the longer you leave somebody seizing, the harder it is going to be to break. So by 30 minutes, I want my patient, if they're still seizing, intubated on propofol and figuring out how to get that continuous EEG mod. So take home, we talked, we talked about the mnemonic terrible causes of status epileptics include eclampsia. So T, toxins and trauma, C, C and S lesions, S for stroke, E for electrolytes, I for infection and eclampsia. I say give relatively large doses of benzodiazepines for me. I don't consider 4 and 8. Um, I consider when I get up to 16, which I have given, to start, that starts to get me in the high dose range, but I don't consider 4 and 8 large doses of, of uh, benzodiazepines, especially or as PAM. I've moved to ketamine as my third line anesthetic um, for status epilepticus. And I think that our goal, if someone's seizing, should be 30 minutes and we get them to general anesthesia. Thank you very much for your your attention.